The following presentation of Cinema Then, Cinema Now is made possible in part by the collaboration of the Consulate General of Spain in New York and by Instituto Cervantes of New York, created by the Spanish government to spread knowledge of the Spanish language and the cultures of Spanish-speaking peoples. <laughs> Welcome to Cinema Then, Cinema Now, the film series with lively discussion. I'm your host, Jerry Carlson, and I teach cinema studies at the College of Staten Island of the City University of New York. Today we're going to be completing our five-week series, Difficult Loves, Amores Difficiles, based on the works of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the Nobel Prize winner from Colombia. Today we'll be seeing a film produced in Spain and directed by Jaime Chavari. The film is called I'm the One You're Looking For, and I must warn you, it's a film about a very difficult love. In fact, this is a rather explicit and rough film, but it's also fascinating and the kind of project that Gabriel Garcia Marquez wanted to take on as part of this series. We'll be able to talk after today's screening about those issues, and there are a lot of them, with the co-writer and director of the film, Jaime Chavari. Now, enjoy. I'm the one you're looking for. Hi, welcome back to Cinema Then, Cinema Now. You've just had the chance to see, I think, an extremely strong film, strong in a number of ways, and one worthy of a lot of discussion, and happily, we have 30 minutes in which to do that, and even more happily, we have the opportunity to have the co-writer of the script and the director of the film uh, with us today, Jaime Chavari. Welcome, Jaime. Good night, Jerry. How are you? Fine, fine. Uh, l let me tell the audience a little bit more about you. Okay. Um, your career has, you've now been working for 20 years as a director of theater, television, and a feature film um, in, in Spain. Uh, a number of your films have won awards, uh, uh, happy to say, around, um, <laughs> around the world. Uh, um, among those films, uh, there are there's Disenchantment. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there's films that have won awards at Chicago and uh, elsewhere. Now, this film was a film you made in 1987 or 88? Yeah, 87. Okay, let's talk a little bit, since this is the last film we're going to be seeing in this uh, series, I'm curious about uh, your working relationship uh, as a director, both with the series and also with uh, Garcia, Garcia Marquez. How did that all happen? Well, um, there, is, uh, there are really two stories. There's the official one in which they just called me, they just called me from television, from Spanish television and asked me if I wanted to direct a story uh, co-written with uh, Gabriel García Márquez, and I immediately said yes, and we started to work. And the real story is a little longer, and I think a little more funny, is that, uh, more fun, is that uh, in theory, uh, García Márquez wanted uh, a woman to direct that film. But the woman uh, he was interested in, a very well-known uh, woman director in Spain, was at that moment, the, let's say, the president of uh, Spanish television, so she couldn't act as a director inside, inside television. So uh, she just charged me with the project. And uh, given the, the, the material of the story, I think that it would have been very interesting that a right, woman absolutely. would have directed it. It's very interesting 
that th the project was first offered in, yeah. in, in that way. Did you have, uh, by the way, did you have any reticence about, I mean, on the one hand, there's the pleasure of working with someone like Garcia Marquez, but... No, not at all, because uh, I thought that it was a very difficult project, and so I liked it even more. I think it was some kind of desafio, um, challenge. Right, you know? right, abs uh, uh, absolutely. So how did, uh, from the time you were uh, uh, contacted, uh, uh, how did your working relationship with Garcia Marquez go, and how did this script, well, actually, where did you begin? What was the basis itself, and then what was the process of development and work? Yeah, uh, Garcia Marquez just have uh, some kind of small paragraph or four, four or five lines about the story, who was taken from a little episode in the, in the book, uh, The Love in the Times of Cholera. Right. And uh, it was about a Caribbean woman who gets raped and she falls to wildly in love with uh, her raper and then uh, uh, finds him at the end and gets happy with him the rest of his life. And then uh, he, he wanted to translate that to a modern town. I selected Barcelona because in Barcelona there is some kind of underground uh, places when you can work this kind of sordid story. Right. So, and we wanted sordid, it was very, very clear. We you were very sordid, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were very conscious that the title of the series was called The Difficult uh, Love Stories. And I told, them, uh, I told him, uh, Gabo, I think this is a, a not sympathetic story. I think people is going to be in some ways like that with yeah. the story. And he said, I don't mind. That's exactly what, you, what I think. I want, I want, I want uh, people to uh, think about the story and what, what happens to that woman. So uh, we started to develop a little that story. Another Spanish co-writer co co was, who was a friend of Garcia Marquez, because I didn't know Gabo then. Right. I know him in the, during the work. And then Gabo came to Spain. We started to work. He, tell, he told us uh, some things he absolutely wanted to be inside, uh, inside the film. He didn't want it, for instance, that we develop at all the, the, the raper. He just wanted to be a presence, but not, right. not, uh, not a no real person. No psychology No psychology him. about him. He just was interested in the woman. And then we got this um, parallel story of the Salamandra and, uh, in the story. And then Gabo left, and we were writing him and sending him the different processes of the script. Right. He was saying, I want this change, I like this. Can I, can I uh, I'm just, just curious about something. Did you, um, was all of this happening on Madrid, or did you go to Barcelona, or? No, he was moving between Madrid and Barcelona and uh, abroad, too. So uh, sometimes we saw him, sometimes we just um, speak uh, with him by phone. It was some kind of uh, amusing and irregular work because uh, he was all, all around the world. <laughs> so <laughs> right, we have to right, go right, after right. him. Right. And I remember a very, a very, very um, uh, fun thing that we were in, at, at home, in my home in Madrid working, and suddenly he got a call from Cyril Castro. I was, was so impressed that he was <laughs> calling my home, you know, <laughs> <laughs> these kind of things that happen with this. <laughs> I think, I think he has a lot of frequent really. flyer miles, as, yeah. we, as, <laughs> as, as, uh, yeah. uh, as we say. So once that I knew that uh, he didn't mind to make some kind of uh, uh, difficult and hard film, we went on with the work uh, normally. No? Okay, and then um, the actual, uh, let's move on to the next stage. Uh, and we'll get to the film itself, I mean the film that, that the audience has just seen. But I'm also curious about the, uh, the production um, I I I itself. Uh, were there any uh, kinds of restrictions on the production? Or one of the things that's very interesting about this series is, of course, that it, it, it has uh, so many distinguished directors in it. And the series is thematically consistent. Yeah this notion of, of difficult loves, mm. but it's really quite different from so many series that are uh, made in a, a single, or what we'd call a house style. Mm. So I'm curious about uh, uh, the relationship between uh, this, uh, this pre-production stage of writing and how it was being visualized between you and Gabo and how then the production was being thought of. Uh, he didn't get into the visualizing of the project. He didn't uh, say anything about actors, about the look of the film, about the kind of film uh, we were going to do. He let me absolutely freedom <coughs> because he knew my work and uh, unfortunately he liked it. Good. So <laughs> I could, so they told me now, now uh, this is all the things I wanted in the script are there so now you can start to work with all freedom. And uh, that's what we did. Uh, we produced, uh, telev uh, Spanish television produced the film uh, more or less like a feature film, not right. like a television film, but like a feature film. We shot uh, six or seven weeks, which is a normal film of, uh, for a feature film in, in, uh, in Spain. We shoot it mostly in Barcelona, 
because I want uh, this kind of sordid places. I told you that now are, uh, are being um, uh, thrown down, but uh, four years ago they were still in the old uh, places of Barcelona. And I selected the cast and uh, nobody, nobody affected my work. I must say that it was totally free. If there are bad things or good things, the goods are from Gabo and the bad are mine. <laughs> well, well, uh, uh, um, as the outsider, I could say I'm not sure things are, are quite as clear um, um, as, as, as that. But this is very interesting because this is very unusual, I think, that uh, directors are given this kind of freedom because there's, there's, there are two sets of forces that potentially would interfere uh, 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 with you and you and perhaps other times in your life have interfered with you and that would either be uh, the fact that this is uh, was being sponsored by Spanish television it, uh, it itself so there you have a, a, a state corporate enterprise yeah. um, state corporate enterprises are not famous for the freedom they give yeah. people uh, and then you have uh, a, a famous a uh, Nobel Prize winning novelist so I think uh, it's well worth noting this yeah. just to give credit where credit is, is due, that uh, there was this kind of freedom for the visual uh, and creative development of the projects given, uh, given to the directors. I, I was also very interested in this, your comment that it's a feature, like feature film because, of course, it has one of the most common differences between feature film and television film, a, in many ways a purely economic thing, uh, is the look because of the time available for lighting and, yeah. and selection of That's locations. Right. Uh, and I thought your, your use of Barcelona, for example, uh, at, uh, particularly at night, was, uh, w w was very, very, um, uh, I mean, fine visually, but very well attuned uh, to the story. That's how yeah. Well, uh, I, have, I have worked before a lot for Spanish television, so we, we knew each other. And in the Spanish television, if it was difficult, I, I speak in the past tense because now, Spanish television isn't producing anymore. Right. Yeah. But uh, once you, you got the idea of making something, it was very difficult to, to obtain the permission. But once you got it, you could do everything you wanted. Was, there was always a lot of freedom in Spanish television. So once the project was uh, approved and with García Márquez behind it, I had no problem at all, okay. just to get into the budget, but that, that I'm used to that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, as, as we say, that comes with the territory. Yeah. That, exactly. <laughs> that exactly. comes with the territory. Uh, and for the part of Gabo, as I told you, uh, there was no problem at all. Um, he said he was very, very happy with the results. He said it was uh, more or less the film he wanted, as hard as, and as difficult as he wanted it. And uh, well, the series was very well sold and have worked uh, anywhere, oh, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah yes, yeah, a, a, absolutely. Now, I'm curious about its um, uh, its initial reception in uh, Spain, uh, in Spain itself. How and how and how did you feel about that reception? Well, uh, the film was uh, shown for the first time in the Valladolid Festival, the whole series. Right. And then I went to the presentation of my film, and this is a typical film in which, I don't know if you use this, this expression in English, that the, the tree wouldn't let see the wood. Uh, you the, can't the see the, uh, the, the, the forest don't want to let for the trees. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. And then as the subject was rape, everybody stuck on that. And nobody went beyond that, what happened. You know, how can you make a film about a woman that likes her raper? How can you make a film about rape? How can you? And then, well, I said, I think that just this, this uh, the, your questions are my answers. Everybody asks why, I think, because nobody does it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. it. And then I thought that uh, this was the, the, the film is about a double rape, a rape, a rape of the body and a rape of the mind. Yes, indeed. And I think that, that this rape of the mind was, was, wasn't understood in, in, in his moment. They thought that just, uh, she was just silly. Instead of thinking that she was more or less crazy at what, what happened to her, I knew, and I have investigated, uh, what happens to the, woman, the, the women that get, got raped. And uh, you know what happened to the women who, who denounce it. Yes. But lots and lots of women, of women wouldn't say anything about it and go on with their lives trying to absorb it yes. or just to forget about it. No? And we just wanted to, say, to, 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 to tell the, the, the case of a woman that gets obsessed with uh, the rape that she thinks she's in love with the, with the raper. And she starts to make all kinds of uh, the, the strangest things that she has never done before. She's really out right. of her mind, no? And uh, at the end, nothing comes of it because there is another uh, people in the in the in the in the film that uh, takes part in the action and then uh, makes the film uh, take another ways. But nobody saw that. Oh, everybody was thinking about the rape, you know, some kind of. Uh, 
I don't know, of uh, social taboo in, in these moments well, that is difficult. It's very, it's very interesting. Uh, before the show, we were talking a little bit about this, and I thought one of the things you were saying was very interesting, which is about the relationship between showing violence and of course, rape is a form of violence, yeah, of course, of course. But, but showing uh, different forms of violence, whether mm. it be sexual violence in the manner of, uh, of rape, or whether it be the kind of violence which leads to death, injury, maiming, uh, yeah. this sort of thing. And we don't have as much difficulty with, uh, with, yeah, with that. Because I, I think that there are, uh, there are uh, social taboos that work very strongly in some moments. Uh, rape is hideous and, and murder is hideous, but uh, you can do any kind of film about murderers and nobody will get we've said anything. But everybody was shocked that I, that I treated the, the, the theme of rape. And then I said, well, uh, there was a girl in the company who said, well, but is the, the rape is even worse, uh, even worse than, than, than killing. And I said, well, this is awful too, I, I agree. But most people prefer to be raped than to be killing. But you can make a, a films about killing, you can make, uh, but you can't yeah. make about rape. Right. So it's, it's something on the, in the air, you know, something right. in, the, in, the, in the social uh, conscience that is especially unpleasant. So uh, I, I made the film knowing all this and right. accepting all this. And when the film wasn't, uh, I think, well understood, say, well, it's right. the, that, the rules well, of the game. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's the fate of many films or many works of that's art. Right. I mean, you, you do it the best way you think, and then it, it, it leaves you. It yeah. goes out, it goes out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It goes out in, into the world. I suspected it because I think, I think that rape is so strong a uh, uh, subject and that uh, moves things so inside you yes. that many people react against it. And I think it's right because this, in some way, in any moment, of course, we try to say that rape was all right or that a woman could uh, find her happiness through rape. That's never in the film, this yeah. kind of thing. But there was something in the ambience that was some kind of accusing me of ha having done something like that, which I was really surprised because I think that it's not your, your in intent film. was exactly the opposite. The opposite said uh, the rape can rape the mind too and can make a woman do things she would never have made uh, before that. No. no. Yeah. Now I, I, I'm curious about um, your preparation of your actors with a script that's as that's as strong and as. Um, as uh, disorienting is th as this one, because this is about a woman who becomes increasingly, disor uh, increasingly disoriented. Uh, for example, with the actress who was who was playing this uh, playing this role, did you? Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm asking about special preparation or, but what kinds of responses did she have to to this kind of sequence of events that she would have to be? She prepared? had problems. Uh, she had to get her, her to to make her mind to make the film. She thought it was a very dangerous subject. It was very unpleasant for her too. But uh, I have worked with her before. Uh, she, she was in two films of mine before, before this. We know each other very well. Uh, fortunately, she had faith in me. And she was very happy with her work, as yeah. I was too. And so uh, we just uh, tried to, to let her go, because I think, you know, she's not, she's not so willingly do, do, doing that. She's like, forced, but she's like possessed by some kind of force. Right. And then uh, uh, don't worry too much about rationalization, uh, rationalization of the yeah. things you are doing. Just think that you have some impulse uh, inside you that is moving you. Right. you know? and, and, and that's, uh, that's how we work it, because I didn't think that uh, she was acting like uh, some kind of intelligent or normal woman, which was another thing. Right. For instance, uh, the, the scene of the second rape. Yes. Uh, no normal woman would have done that. Right. Because she, was looking, she wasn't looking for rape. Right, absolutely. But she was putting herself in situations in which, you know, I think that... Uh, uh, individual minds uh, are well, unique, and uh, that's actually, I think, uh, uh, t I mean, to use the word, that's the roughest scene yeah, so. in the in, in, in the in the in the entire film: a double rape, and then with a voyeur uh, watching the salamander at that. That becomes uh, almost the, the the good person of the film. At the same well, time. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, now that's a very I interesting uh, point because this is not only a film that is. Uh, uh, that shows her mental uh, breakup or and, and mental rape as well. But this is a film that uh, really challenges a lot of of uh, a spectators and certainly society's notions about um, uh, about who we should judge as the morally normal, whatever that That's right. strange uh, That's right. strange phrase That's right. uh, may, may mean. Um, That's right. That's right. There is uh, something that which I should have maybe. 
uh, given more importance in the film. At the beginning, when she goes to the woman that uh, takes, uh, yes. makes the card for having the... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's the, uh, she's a reader. Yeah, a uh -huh. reader. And then uh, the reader tells her, you're going to have a lot of money and you're going to find your great love. And this is ironic because uh, instead of the great love, she gets raped and instead of getting a lot of money, she just wins in the machines of, uh, yes, yes, of yes. that. No? So this is kind of ironic view of the whole thing from the beginning of, right. the, of, the, of the film. And uh, she thinks uh, maybe that the great love is this raper, but the great love is the, the salamander, yes, yes. which she can see because she's not thinking about him. That's right. uh, and which is a man which, who, whose passion is so strong that he just burns in love, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. It, it's this is the fantastic uh, thing that I introduced and that uh, Garcia Marquez liked very much because I thought that uh, it gives to the film this kind of the sense in hell in which you, in which she found people she couldn't have found anyway in her yes. life if not if not yes. for this, no? It, or the woman that has been raped too and has developed so strong a hate for men that she has grown a beard, no? This kind of things that, that I think uh, that was, I, I don't no, know. I, those are, uh, uh, it's very interesting because to me those are, uh, I, I, I think you'll take this in the right way, those are the Garcia Marquez touches, but in fact they come out of the collaboration yeah. because his, his aesthetic, his way of telling stories has become so much of worldwide yeah. uh, 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 culture that uh, when he's working with someone, you you begin to tell a story in a Garcia Marquez yeah, like you, way. Yeah, I could tell him, you know, I think I invented this thing that I think is very, very Garcia Marquez. What do you think? <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I, it's extremely nice. It's very, very, very nice to work with him, really, really. It's difficult because sometimes he wanted to impose something, like for instance, uh, this, uh, this fact that the, that the raper wasn't a personality, just some kind of shadow, and uh, this place where the rapers are reunited. Right, yes, This yes, was yes. an idea of his, too, that it amused me very much. And I think there is clear, too, that she's terrified what was happening. She's not happy at all in this company. <laughs> oh, 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 no, 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 not, uh, not, not at all. That's actually, that's, a, that's another. And it's also a scene uh, re reminiscent of a, of a lot of, of, of asylums. I, I also think of the, there's a wonderful movie I know you know by Federico Fellini, The White Cheek, about a yeah. honeymoon that goes, uh, I mean, it, it, as we would say in American English, it's the honeymoon from hell. Mm -hmm. uh, everything goes wrong and the uh -huh. bride ends up in, a, in an asylum uh, at, the, uh, at the end and you think, this is not how we planned the honeymoon <laughs> 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 quite at all. And I, th I, I was uh, thinking uh, along uh, those lines. There's something else that, that I think, uh, because of the, the strength of some of the scenes that follow, uh, 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 that follow her, that I suspect, um, uh, well, I know are, are, part of, are part of the film, but uh, perhaps certain audiences don't understand as much. And that is, I thought, not only was there an extraordinary portrayal in the film of this underworld and this way in which she drifts into company uh, that she would not normally be part of, but I thought that the portrayal was very strong of the world she comes from and, and, and why not merely psychologically this would be so devastating, but in a way why socially this would be so devastating um, as, as well. Because uh, the portrayal of a, of a particular extremely prosperous uh, class of yeah. young Spaniards, the people who have taken, who've had gotten the greatest social and economic advantage right. of the last 15 years of Spanish uh, democracy, but who also represent a, an extraordinarily sh shallow. Yeah, uh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, th th this was a very difficult uh, equilibrium. Uh, Equi equilibrium. Yes. Equilibrium. Because uh, you couldn't say, no, but you know, you're pro rape because now she really is living. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you say, no, is that a, a, a rich, uh, bored girl uh, gets raped and then discovers life. It wasn't exactly that. Yes. It wasn't exactly that. So I couldn't uh, insist much about this kind of uh, shallow life that she led with this kind of handsome uh, boyfriend that is like like some kind of model of Calvin yeah. Klein or something like that. No? I think that the physique of the man uh, told a lot of things about him yes. in some kind of that. And so it's a part of true in that she really uh, maybe is more... Uh, uh, her adre adrenaline is working stronger with yes. that story, but it's not that she's happier. It's just that this is happening to her. Yeah, yeah, yes, it, her. that's the, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the sentimental version would be shallow, poor, 
poor little rich girl yeah, as yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, but that's why I wanted to go away for that. Yeah. I went away for that. And at the end, at the end of the of the of the film, when she comes back, when she comes back home, she goes home because she has another another place to go, given the things that have just happened to her. And then uh, uh, when her, her husband confronts her, she really realizes where love was. She remembers the heat of the hands of the salamandra, yes. and where her husband quite tenderly uh, touches her, uh, she said, your hands are cold. Mm. And that's the end of the film, you know. She has realized that love isn't, maybe not in her, in the, in this shallow, beautiful boy that lives with her, and not in the rape, but in this kind of love that you can see, that you can hear, but is there all the time protecting and, and taking care of, which were the salamander, no? But she realizes it's too late, too late maybe. Uh, no, well, that's, uh, that's one of the things that, that, uh, that interests me about the film is, is this structural principle that you're talking about because this, this uh, very uh, strong, uh, bizarre uh, double rape takes place really more or less at the center of the, uh, uh, of the film. Yeah. And so when we move into that last half of the film, um, in fact, if you followed a certain kind of Hollywood formula, you could say that the film moves away from certain kinds of, of externalized dramatic climaxes. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's no, there's no helicopter attack at the end of this film. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, it, but in fact, we, we're getting deeper and deeper uh, into her. And so I, uh, um, it's very interesting that you have scenes of such significant and horrific action and yet, uh, at the end of the film, the, the significance is saved by something like the placing of a hand mm. uh, in, instead of all of the physical yeah, force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, physical force. Mm. Uh, she, she's obsessed by physical things. When she goes to, to, to see the salamandra, there is a moment in with the cue, the, the, la cola, the yeah. tail yeah. of the salamandra. Just oh yes, gets around gets her around leg. Her leg. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it was it was very a very silly thing, which was very difficult to do because we have no special effects in this kind of films. Right, right, right. So it was purely mechanical. <laughs> 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 yeah. So you, you had one of those people yeah. off frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, then, with, with, with and we did it in the in the inverse sense. Yeah. Yeah, because it was easier. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah, made yeah. Uh, the she the put movement it around her. and doing it, it, and then we shoot in the so it seemed that. The, the tail was uh, uh, surrounding her, her right, 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 right. And uh, uh, she's all the time washing and feeling strange things with her body, and I think that was interesting. Other thing that people were, uh, were shocked was that uh, the, the, when she arrives home after being raped, she just makes love normally with her, with her boyfriend. Right. And I tell why a woman has to get, has to hate the rest of the men because she has been raped. Some women do, right. but some don't, some don't. Why don't look for the tenderness and the, clean sex and the loving sex of her partner. I didn't think uh, nothing strange about it. Some people were shocked about it. You know, everyone has his, his reactions well, about this kind uh, of... Uh, well, I think, there's a, I think there's one reason, I mean, there are many reasons for that. One of them is a more general sense of, of, uh, of social taboos. But another thing is a, is, is a slightly more specific, that when certain subjects are treated now, they're not treated about individuals, or those individuals yeah. become a kind of generalized example. That's so right. their specific wrong. psychology, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and this film does exactly the opposite because it's very interested in her, her particular, her individualized response as n not as a generalized that's example. Right. That's right. Uh, that's right. That was a challenge because uh, I knew that everybody hates rape, and then I wanted to do a film about the specific woman right. that has a problem different to the other women that get raped. But it's always a specific problem, and that's true. And I think movies are made of people, not of general uh, ideas. Some of them are, some are very good, but lately not so much. Also, there's another, I think, um, problem that's not just um, a problem of, of, of subject matter uh, that's, that's part of the, uh, uh, of, of the courage of this film. And that is um, a lot of films take um, the equivalent of a novel's third-person point, uh, uh, point of view. But the point of view of this film is there, there, there are, there's not a preponderance of, of uh, point of view shots from her. As a matter of fact, are there any? Did no, you, I, think I, think I, I don't think you used no. one optical point of view no. shot. But we do follow her experience. And so much of the time, we're experiencing scenes as she experiences uh, them. And so 
since she is getting more disoriented and less rational and more confused in her response, that puts the spectator in a, in a similar situation. A absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I know. <laughs> yeah, well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but see, what's interesting is that the, is that the is that again when this kind of subject is 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 treated frequently cinematically, the the director's point of view, that is the director's commentary upon it, is frequently there in this equivalent of the uh, of the third of the third person, and that's exactly what you refuse to yeah. do. There is only one scene in, the, in which I think I, I, I try to, to reflect some kind of solidarity, which is the bar scene with the song. Oh, yes. When everybody uh, is some kind of uh, being together, no? some kind of thing that uh, uh, puts together some kind of unhappy people. Yes, indeed. The woman with the bird, the woman is just going to be killed in the same bar and the, and the, main, the main girl of the film. I like very much this moment. I, I think it's some kind of uh, very sad moment. And just afterwards, uh, this scene, we go to the street when she got uh, uh, washed by a car who is oh, cleaning yes. the streets. You yes, know, yes. a big... Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the, the big spew of the water. The big spew of water, yeah. I don't know. It's some, I think that she's extremely unhappy, and she doesn't know, but I wanted to transmit to the, to the spectator that she's very unhappy, and the spectator receives that like him himself being right. unhappy. And that, I like that. Okay. I think it's hard, but I like that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Let, let me. Uh, you can't see the film. You can't get indignant by the film. It's difficult to see the film coldly and uh, and uh, you know and say, ah, well, I just to see. Ah, well, well that's uh, that's an interesting point <laughs> that that uh, most of the films that people object to, uh, th there's always something a, a little bit dangerous about their objection because it it means that the film was working on them a little bit too much so yeah. it is something uh, as we would as we would say it it got to them yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. In, in in some way and you say well gee we a lot of art that gets to you in that way may be in fact accomplishing yeah. um, its its end now i'm curious we don't have very much time uh, left i'm curious about um, uh, this is of course 5 to 7 years ago in which you were uh, working on this project uh, you've done m much work since then it, is there some way in which this work with Garcia Marquez you think has left a, uh, a permanent mark on what is a, your very flexible work? Well, I don't know. You know, when you find someone that uh, you really like, I think that the personal relationship is more important for me than the work on the film. Uh, I think that the opportunity of working with uh, Garcia Marquez was the opportunity to know some really extraordinary man yeah? in many senses, as a writer and as a person. And uh, I wasn't old, I wasn't afraid, or I didn't yeah. have any moment of uh, tension or nerves or anything. It was very relaxed and wonderful. But I was, uh, I remember I was rereading, then reading again, um, uh, la, the, short, the short novel. Uh, uh, Chronicle of a Death Foretold. Yeah, and it was absolutely marvelous. I think it's one of the greatest short novels I've read in my life. And so I was a little snobbish thinking, I'm working with him, you know? <laughs> well, listen, I'm, I'm a little bit snobbish because we've had the pleasure of having you here. Oh, please. Uh, no, 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 no. No, but I mean that, that really, uh, when you, it's very rare that you have the opportunity of working with something you really admire. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We've now come to the end. I'm sorry to, okay. uh, I'm sorry to tell you. I think you. it's a good end. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, absolutely right. If you'd like more information about Cinema Then, Cinema Now, or about cinema studies, drop us a line. Drop it to Cinema Then, Cinema Now, the College of Staten Island, Staten Island, New York, 10301. Let me give you that information again. Drop it to Cinema Then, Cinema Now, the College of Staten Island, Staten Island, New York, 10301. Jaime, I can't tell you what a pleasure it has been to have you here bringing your information about the collaboration <laughs> with Garcia Marquez, your expertise as a director, and on this particularly, I think, a quite remarkable and strong uh, film, clarifying what I think are a, a set of very interesting issues about it. Thanks for joining us and for coming all the way from Spain to do so. Thank you very much, Jerry. Great. I hope, as always, that our thought and discussion here leads you to thought and discussion at home that you enjoy. Thanks for joining us.
The preceding presentation of Cinema Then, Cinema Now is made possible in part by the collaboration of the Consulate General of Spain in New York and by Instituto Cervantes of New York, created by the Spanish government to spread knowledge of the Spanish language and the cultures of Spanish-speaking peoples. For more information about Instituto Cervantes, please call 212 689-4232.